So the question is, ladies and gentlemen, if this player wasn't so hampered by injuries in, uh, in the first few seasons of his career, could he have been as successful as an Al McGinnis, uh, Brian Leach, uh, some other uh, top flight American defenseman of his era? I think so. This guy had oodles of talent, but like I said, injuries really hampered his, uh, his playing career in the NHL despite a great start and possibly one of the most important defensemen on the Minnesota North Stars in what's I call their revival years of the late 70s into the early 80s. So today we're going to be talking about probably, again, one of the best Aboriginal uh, defensemen of his era in the NHL, Gary Sargent. Now, Gary Allen, uh, Allen Sargent, born in Red Lake, Minnesota, uh, was raised in uh, Bemidji, Minnesota, where there's a strong hockey and uh, college program. Uh, excuse me, high school hockey and college program. I've had a great opportunity to cover athletes from their uh, university there and boys there, a talented program to have. Now, he played 402 games in NHL between 75 and 83. He was a first-team All-Star at uh, and league MVP at Bemidji State University. But again, like I said, his professional hockey career was cut short by uh, severe nagging injuries. Now, a member of the Ojibwa Chippewa Nation, he was born on a First Nation Reserve. Now, he ended up being a highly promising high school basketball and gridiron football player, receiving an offer to sign a professional contract with the Minnesota Twins, as well as several uh, scholarship offers from college squads. However, Sargent decided to pursue a career in hockey instead, 5'10", 200 pounds, uh, strong on the back end. Now, his distant cousin, Henry Bouchard, and later his first cousin, T.J. Oshie, also played the NHL, while his younger brother, Earl Sargent, is a former NHL draft choice who played minor league hockey. So the, uh, the talent is uh, deep and, uh, in that uh, lineage. Now, Sargent was first came to major prominence again with Bemidji State, or Be Bemidji State University in 73, where he put up 47 uh, points and 30 goals. Now, his hometown high school... The second season uh, had a lot of interest. He had 51 points that year. Now, the 74 draft was quite interesting. He had played with the Fargo-Moorhead Sugar, King, Sugar Kings of the MJHL, where he put up 83 points in 47 games. So his draft year wasn't in college, ladies and gentlemen. It was in that uh, minor league. Now, NHL draft, he was taken 48 overall by the Kings and 179 overall by the Indianapolis Racers. Now, there was some question if the Montreal Canadiens or Toronto Maple Leafs were going to take a chance on him because they were drafting a lot of uh, players from Minnesota, but uh, it didn't pan out. Now, now he joined the Kings in 1975 excelling, after excelling for the U.S. national hockey team at the 1973 Ice Hockey World Championships on the B-level in the World <coughs> Junior Ice Hockey Championship Tournament in '74 where he was voted most valuable defenseman. He was also named the Kings' outstanding newcomer after his rookie year. Now, he played on the uh, U.S. team at the inaugural 1976 Canada Cup tournament and was voted the Kings' best defenseman of the year in 77. In 78, Sargent tallied 54 points, had a plus-minus of a plus ed team that on a squad that was minus two for the season. However, the Kings failed to re-sign Sargent and he become, became a free agent. Now, here it gets a weird machinations, ladies and gentlemen. In the summer of 78, Sargent signed with the Minnesota North Stars as a restricted free agent when his contract with the, the Kings ended. Minnesota had to give up three players to L.A., uh, the talented Rick Hampton, Steve Jensen, and Dave Gardner as compensation. But Sargent quickly became one of these new team's most important defensemen in 78-79, being on the ice for a league record record. 53% of his team's goals that season. Sargent was selected to the 1980 NHL All-Star Game in L.A., but was unable to participate due to persistent back and knee problems, which eventually forced him to retire prematurely in 1983 after missing most of the previous three seasons. Now, Sargent returned to the Kings after retiring as a player as he worked as a scout for the team for three uh, over three seasons. Now, Best season uh, with the Kings was again 77, where he had 54 points and helped him uh, to a nine game playoff run. And 1980 was also a big year, injury riddled, but he did uh, play enough to uh, help knock off uh, Montreal in the, uh, in the quarterfinals of defending Stanley Cup champions. 
So full NHL totals, 222 points, 402 uh, games, 61 goals. And again, uh, 12 points in 20 playoff games. Majority with them with the uh, with the Kings. Now, uh, the World Championships at the W World Championships B Tournament. 5 points in 1973 in 7 games. 74, 2 points at the World Juniors. And Canada Cup, uh, no points in 5 games. But what a strong uh, future of American hockey. Hockey that, uh, that occurred at that 76 uh, Canada Cup. And... Uh, if you had a chance, go on YouTube. The almost defeated uh, Team Canada in their game against them. He lost four to two, but he gave uh, the Canadians everything he could handle. And Gary Sargent was a big uh, part of that uh, strong, flowing uh, offense that Team uh, USA had in that uh, tournament. Now uh, we talk about Aboriginal hockey history. He's a big part of that. Uh, to my to my knowledge, I don't know if he uh, uh, in the 2020 with the injuries he had that would be treatable or not, but uh, the back and knee problems really, really hurt him because being the uh, the aggressive push-off defenseman, you know, where using a lot of leg strength to skate in his own and hits, you know, uh, when he got those injuries, he couldn't play the Gary Sargent style. We used to call it the Gary Sargent style because he wasn't scared to uh, take a chance in the corner. And, you know, um, I still basically think he, the best hockey he played was with Minnesota, but like the injuries, you know, maybe it was the rink or maybe it was the, the heavy travel. But, uh, you know, uh, when he went over to Minnesota after the first season, like I said, his body, his body started to break down and it comes to a certain point, you can't make a comeback. But like I said, he uh, he was on a team that got to the Stanley Cup final, that uh, made it to the semifinals in 1980. And uh, the players like him really, really were respected by the fans, still remains a fan favorite in Minnesota. Thanks for listening. Have a good evening. Bye.